Louisville Motor Speedway, aptly called the Bull Ring. Louisville can hurt you. Question today, who will be the last one standing? A beautiful day to go racing NASCAR Craftsman Truck Racing, number 13 of 26 in the series, here today on CBS. And hello, everyone. Ken Squire with you. How would you describe this track? Well, if you opened a dictionary, a race fan would tell you you'd look up the word bowling, and there would be a picture of the Louisville Motor Speedway. It races like a quarter mile, where it used to be a quarter mile. Races like, like a road course on the, most of the 7 sixteenths, and coming down here out of turn four, it's like competing over a ski jump. It's a wild track for these 32 drivers running 225 laps 98 miles today here. One driver this morning said, when you come down to the start line, you turn left, and you just keep turning for 225 laps. There's a lot of great stories. Stories galore here today. And one of the best is in the front row. Let's join Dick Bergen right now. Ken, it's an old Dodge front row today. Despite that, in the 56th race history of this series, Dodge has won just its single event. The driver who won that race is a stock car champion. But a rookie here in the trucks, Indiana's Tony Raines, it's going to take to win this thing today. Uh, a little bit of luck. I think uh, it's a really, really challenging track, and uh, I've got a good truck underneath me, so uh, we're just going to see what we can do. And starting on the pole from Ridgeway, Virginia, one of the real veterans, Jimmy Hensley. One of the things that's going to be a real problem today, Jimmy Hensley, is finishing this thing. Last year, virtually a third of the guys who started crashed out of it. How tough is it going to be today? Yeah, probably the same deal. You know, it's, uh, we got a pretty tight track here, and uh, you know, it's, everybody's running pretty close together. So it's probably a little beating and banging as the day goes on. Hopefully, we stay stay clean and uh, have stay up front all day, and have a good finish. Well, good luck to you. Right behind us is the guy who won this race last year. He also won at Milwaukee last week on CBS. It's Ron Hornaday. He's with Ral Shaheen. Well, this blue number 16 is named Melissa. It is the winningest truck in the Dale Earnhardt Racing Stables with eight victories. This is Ron Hornaday, the pilot of the truck. He has won three races this season, the most on the tour. What does it take to win on a bull ring? Well, I don't know if you call it the bull ring. I mean, it's... The only time you call it a bull ring is if you're out front and the guys are already stay, taking jabs at you. But uh, starting the outside here, you're just going to have to be patient. Stay these tires and uh, just see if we can keep the Navajo Chevrolet up front. We're just going to have to be patient all day. Ken Squire, Ron Hornaday knows how to get around this Louisville racetrack. He won this event last year. Ralph, he is one of the few that can get the throttle all the way down, and there's only one place to do it. Imagine this, going uphill through turns one and two. The very best can get the throttle all the way down, but most of them, they won't come close to touching that. And you've got to hit this first turn dead on. If you don't, you get down here on these rumble strips, and that will rumple up your day because at over 100 miles an hour, it's head on into the concrete. The story of this track is the story of the race today as much as any competitor here and with more on the track let's go to the guys making the call here's mike joy thank you ken and hello everybody one driver described this place as like trying to fly a fighter jet inside a gymnasium another said it's the track he'd most like to skip on the circuit but the first one he'd line up and buy a ticket to watch the race at i'm joined by two-time national champ ned jarrett and the newest nmpa hall of famer Buddy Baker. Ned, what makes this track so difficult? Mike, it seems every week we're talking about a unique racetrack, and I think that's one of the appeals of motorsports, the fact that every track is a little bit different. This one might be the most unique of them all. Let's take a look at it. Start and start finish line. You go down into turn one, make a sharp left, then down to turn two, then another sharp left, over to turn three, and then you got a little straightaway and a jump down to turn four, and then back to the start finish line all right ned where are the trouble spots here well let's see turn one's a trouble spot turn two turn four hey you can just mark an x <laughs> over the whole thing every part on the racetrack is a trouble spot 
All right, then, Professor Baker, on a track that's this tough to drive, how do you get around here and save your truck? The important part is really managing your tires, also being very, very careful because you run over half of this racetrack out of the throttle, almost three-quarter throttle around the real uh, long part of the racetrack over on the back side. If you back off too much, you get run over. So you, got, <laughs> you have to keep the speed up and really protect your truck for, uh, to win. Well, to win is important, and to finish is important, especially for the two drivers that top the point standings. Either Rich Bickle or Jack Sprague will leave this, the midpoint race in the season, with the point lead, and as such, with a $10,000 bonus. And, Mike, I think Rich Bickle will have a good chance of taking that $10,000. He likes this type of a racetrack, has a lot of experience on them, so look for him to do well. Well, guys, don't forget about Jack Sprague. He has a wealth of experience on this type of racetrack. They call him Mile Track Jack, but he can drive this racetrack well. Don't count him out. How about Kenny Irwin Jr., the rookie point leader with two victories and rumors swirling around Irwin about a possible Winston Cup future, maybe as quickly as next year. Scott Walters might have more laps on this racetrack than any of the drivers in the field today, but he doesn't have experience in the trucks. As a matter of fact, he's been the crew chief on the truck that he's driving here today for the last two races. It's been driven by the Green Brothers, David and Mark. Look for him to do well here. Well, the Matadors are inside their trucks and they're ready to tackle the bull ring. We'll be back with the start of the Louisville 225 in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Mobile One, 100% synthetic motor oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. And by Econo Lodge. Spend a night, not a fortune, at Econo Lodge. Welcome back to Louisville. They're ready to fire them off. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for today's race. Jimmy Hensley, new track record, his second career pole, and Tony Raines makes it an all-dodge front row. Joe Rutman, the Orlando winner, and Ron Hornaday Jr., the defending champ of this race, in row two. Rick Crawford, second among the rookies this year, and Stacy Compton ends his best start of the season. Rick Corelli, he's on fire with five top tens in his last six starts, and Brian Reffner, sixth here last year. Boris said, runner-up in Texas, and Bob Keselowski, Rich Bickle, the point leader, and Mike Bliss, Phil Row 6. Scott Walters, the local hero, and Tammy Jo Kirk in Row 7. Terry Cook has his best start of the year, and two-time winner Kenny Irwin. Dan Press and Butch Miller both looking for their first win this year. Jack Sprague, two-time winner, and Michael Dawkins. Tony Roper and Chuck Bounds in the 11th row. Bill Kimmel, two-time late model champ here with Kevin Harvick. Brian Cunningham with Jay Sauter, the New Hampshire winner. Robbie Pyle makes his debut. He's out of Arca. And Doug George. Dave Rosendi, three-time winner last year. And Mike Cope, the All-Pro champ. Mike Wallace, sixth at Milwaukee last week. And Wayne Grubb makes his fourth start of the series. Six DNQs, including five rookies. Gary Brooks, Tom Humphreys, Eddie Johnson, Billy Pouch, and Jeff Spraker, the rookies. Bill Sedgwick, the lone veteran who did not make the field. This is your manufacturer's breakdown. In today's show, you will have 15 Chevrolets, 12 Fords, 5 Dodges. As you can see, Chevrolet is in the win column with 8, Ford with 3, and Dodge with 1. 32 trucks starting today's race, 225 laps, 98.4 miles. It's a two-segment race. They'll run 114 laps, then take a break, and they'll be able to change tires, gas them up, then go for 111 laps. It's open pit. That means they can stop under green at any time, do anything except and change tires unless they have a flat. If they do change tires and they don't have a flat, then it's a five-lap penalty per tire. NASCAR does that to keep the cost down as much as possible in this series. To the uniqueness of this track, add the heat today. The humidity higher than the temperature. They're both up in the 80s. Track temperature 127 degrees in truck. It's now hotter. 
Jimmy Hensley. The Cummins Diesel Dodge carries our CBS race cam today from the pole. And also from the front row, Tony Raines. He's in the Pennzoil Dodge, and you get these views from Tony's truck. Defending race champ, Ron Hornaday Jr., the Napa Brake Chevrolet, has an in-truck camera. As does Boris said, the Federated Auto Parts, 1-800-COLLECT-4. And you ride with Mike Bliss, the Team ASE Ultra Wheels Ford. And finally, our Econolodge cam is mounted on Jay Sauter's GM Goodrent Chevrolet. Getting ready for a start here at Louisville. A quarter-mile track expanded to a 7 16 mile oval four years ago. What a unique place it is. And it's packed with race fans. They know what happened here last year. And they're looking forward to the same kind of slam-bang short track action. Boy, Tony Ray got himself a jump. And here's Hornaday wants to lead the first lap. Mike is a little contact there between Hornaday and Reigns on the outside. You can see a little damage on the left rear corner of Reigns' truck as they head off into the really tough part of this racetrack. Three-quarter throttle through this area. Tony Reigns may have got the jump on the start, but now he's hung on the outside. And it's going to be tough to get back in because they're running bumper to bumper down on the inside, which is the preferred group. You're watching for Ron Hornaday back at Jimmy Hensley. And now you're watching from Tony Raines as Rick Crawford and now Stacy Compton go past. And, and Mike he still can't get in line. Yeah, he's just looking for just an opening of a half a truck lens, but he can't find it. Mike, he's out to have a birthday before he gets back on the inside <laughs> of the race track. I tell you, Raines is caught on the outside. You can see his back slid some eight positions already. That yellow truck of Tony Raines is out there in no man's land. There you got it. The 44 truck of four slid, slid just a little bit coming off of turn four, and he gave it the the opening that he needed to get down on the inside. The 14 truck there, that's uh, Crawford, as he's making a move on Joe Rutman, he's giving him a little wake-up call there about two or three times in the left rear corner there. Rutman's very tough on this type of racetrack. This is a hold-your-breath racetrack. You run hard all the way around, but never hard flat on the throttle, except for just a little bit here. Believe it or not, there's at least one truck out there that has a restrictor plate under the carburetor. That is Mike Wallace. Trying to restrict how much power gets down to the wheels so he doesn't spin them. Exactly right. A lot of these trucks are running gears that will not allow the RPM to get to the place where they're very touchy on the throttle. The main thing is be able to put a lot of uh, forward torque on these trucks as they head off the corner. Single file through the first 10 spots. Ron Hornaday leading pole sitter Jimmy Hensley, Joe Ruckman, and Rick Crawford. We are caution free through these early laps. Trouble front straight away. I never should have said that. Tony Roper and Butch Miller go for a spin. Damage to the sheet metal on the left rear of Miller's truck, but he's going to beat race leader Ron Hornaday around to the caution flag. That was very, very lucky. You see, Roper was not so lucky. He has a lot of damage to the right front corner of that truck and left front. Second generation driver, Tony Roper, in trouble here early. Butch Miller spun, and then Roper had nowhere to go. Miller, a driver who likes the flat tracks. And he's out in front of the race leader. Let's show you the aftermath of this one. It'll come into the screen here in a moment. That black truck is Jay Salter, the number three. Chasing Kevin Harvick. Oops. Well, it's <laughs> up in front of him there. Yep. As the 31 and the 20th 20 car truck get together and down to the inside of the track. And fortunately, Mike, they did spin to the inside of the racetrack. One thing there, as you do start down, the, we have a unique racetrack when we talk about this. We're talking about them coming down a jump. Actually, you're crossing another racetrack. They have a little eight-mile racetrack on the inside of the big track here, and that's down the part of the, as you see, the truck's coming down the hill right there. That's what we're talking about. And if you get on the inside and the guy don't see you and you touch him on the left rear, that's what happens just now. So we're under the first caution of the day, and it comes out very quickly here at Louisville, and that is no surprise. 14 cautions in this race last year. Not a record, but a lot. There at the exit of turn one, you see where they pull into the pits, where Butch Miller 
crew working on that Chevrolet. Hopefully just sheet metal damage. Let's take another look at what happened here. Wow, I, there was no touch there. You're exactly right, Mike. The uh, 20 of Miller got sideways and Roper just come down there and got collected in the spin. Now here's Rich Bickle in 17, right side of your screen, Bob Keselowski in 29. Oh, yeah, they're doing a little bump in the grind in back there as well. And I assume that they were coming down and things were happening up in front of them and they need to slow down. Now, one thing you notice when Butch Miller comes in is they pit in here. And the pits are lined up on both sides of this straightaway. Then to exit the pitch, you come around the little oval and go back out. Just another unique facet of this racetrack. Now, where those cars and trucks made contact is right there at the inside of the racetrack that developed a little rut there down in the dirt where uh, you just saw the 17 drop in there of Rich Bickle, and he may or may not have gotten hit there uh, by Bob Keselowski. Dick Bergeron? Things could not be going worse for Butch Miller. Right now, his crew chief is standing on top of one of the war wagons with his knee in a cast, orthoscop orthoscopic surgery this week. His truck out of brakes. They're working underneath the hood, trying to return the brakes to it. He's had five tough runs in a row, and this is going to be number six. Ralph? Dick, crew chief Jim Daly for Tony Roper said that Tony radioed in and said that Butch lost it in front of him, and he had nowhere to go. The front end damage to the number 31 truck appears to be just cosmetic after a quick trip down, big, uh, down pit road. Pace truck pulls in. We get set to go back to green. Of course, it's all things single file on this restart. The reason for that, until they make lap traffic uh, one lap down, you have to start single file just like you were running on the racetrack. Battle is for second. Hensley went high coming into turn three, and Joe Rutman was right there to seize the opportunity. Hornaday the leader, Rutman in second, Hensley now third, and Rick Crawford. All throw standout, but the truck rookie on the right side of your screen, and that blue number 14 is for it. Look how fast Joe Rutman has called Hornaday there in second place. You can see he's right on the tailgate as they go around. Rutman was the fastest truck in this morning practice today. From Ron Hornaday's truck, Joe Rutman, you saw him take that little bounce off what Ken Squire called the ski jump between turn three and four. Where the trouble, new track meets the old. Mike Wallace spinning, no caution. Back up to speed. That's the truck that has the restrictor blade on it. Try to reduce the horsepower. Now Hornaday builds up just a little bit of a lead. Call it two, maybe three truck lengths. Mike, what happens there is the spotters every once in a while they yell out trouble on the racetrack, and he probably told uh, Rutman that there was trouble, and he backed off just a little bit, but he's right back where he was a second ago now. That truck is fast. Mike Wallace stays on the lead lap after that little spin to the infield. And Rutman is caught right back up on Hornaday's bumper. After Crawford in fourth, Stacy Compton in fifth, Rick Corelli sixth. How about this battle? <laughs> and they have been battling, Mike. They've been doing a lot of bumping. Rick Corelli trying to get around Stacy Compton, but it's a difficult track to pass on. Corelli's had some great finishes these last couple of weeks. Five of the last six have been in the top ten, and he's really come on in late race. Here for the first time in several weeks, he's up in the top half dozen in the opening laps in that number six. He has a lot of experience on the track we'll be at next week watching these trucks run out in Colorado, and it's a short bull ring like this, too, and so he knows how to get around this type of racetrack. Back behind Corelli, Tony Raines, who started on the outside pole. You're riding with rain. This is my favorite shot right here. You want to know what a race car driver sees going down in the corner? This camera captures everything that the driver sees. Let's listen to Reigns for a lap. That ought to tell you just how tough this place is. <laughs> Forward to throttle right there, you can hear they're not revving it up. Yes, Ken Squire said about the only place you can get it wide open is when you come past the start finish or come off the turn one there. Maybe trouble for Kenny Irwin Jr. There's smoke coming out the back of his 
number 98 Ford. Uh, looks like body rub on the left rear. You may see it here as he goes into the corner. He's running in 19th position. Well, we'll show you he's had some damage. He's been pretty hit pretty hard on the left rear of that truck. Getting hit again there right now. But you see that damage on the truck right there? Also, if you'll look on the left rear tire there, you can see the shiny part right around the, uh, just below the gold part. That's the lettering on the side just out there. The fender is rubbing that tire. Well, good news, it's not a mechanical problem. And they expected to have that kind of damage. Maybe not so early in the race. Jimmy Hensley, Rick Crawford, and Stacy Compton will be right back to Louisville. Second caution of the day comes out of lap 35 in the second pack of trucks. A big dust up coming over the ski jump toward turn number four. I don't know why we call it a ski jump. It's 85 degrees out today. <laughs> but that little drop between turn three and four is where things packed up and got together and sent Kenny Irwin spinning. Let's show you from Jay Sauter's truck what happened. Okay, well you see right there on the inside the uh, two of uh, Mike Bliss is there. You can see a little contact there. Kenny Irwin just turned around there as uh, Tammy Jo Kirk in the seven just got into the left rear corner of him. But it was not her fault. She was just a chain reaction. Looking back from Mike Bliss then. And you can see that, that Kenny Irwin got on the inside of the, what was that, the Dockin. Dockin truck, number 18. And when he slowed, when he backed off to keep from magnifying that contact, well, then Tammy Joe Kirk got into it. Here it is from There's another view. You can see those two trucks right there getting together. That's Kenny Irwin down on the inside. And here is the 98 truck of Kenny Irwin getting hit by the 7 truck of Tammy Joe Kirk. But that was after what happened up in front of him. For more on Kenny Irwin, here's Dick Bergeron. Kenny Irwin was in the pits momentarily, and that truck is really torn up, or at least the sheet metal on that truck is really torn up. They changed the flat left front tire, pulled the sheet metal out of the left rear. That was creating some smoke problems. Meanwhile, Tony, or, uh, Tony Roper has hit it in the pits, and the front end of the last truck they have in their stable is all bashed up. This is the truck they had hoped to take to Colorado last week, next weekend. Uh, Roper has lost a lap. Irwin did not. Mike? Getting set to go back to Green Dick after this second caution of the day. Two cautions already in Irwin, 35 laps. Irwin did lose a lap on the racetrack before he came into the pits. The leaders came around and passed him while he was sitting there, and he might be a couple laps down by now. Two laps, Ned. He's okay. two laps behind. Brian Cunningham has lost a lap. Roper is three laps down. Good start. No pressure. Hearing from the spotters as we go back to Green. Ron Hornaday leading Joe Rutman. Jimmy Hensley in third, Rick Crawford in fourth, Stacy Compton in fifth. Good run for those two rookies. Sixth is Rick Corelli, seventh, Tony Raines, eighth, Brian Reptner, ninth is point leader Rich Bickle, and tenth is Boris Sen. The leaders get a little bit of breathing room here. Third on back, you see it's still very tightly packed. And there's a bunch of trucks that got some breathing room, too, Mike, that were almost a lap down right before this caution came out. There were a lot of trucks that, that were about to go a lap down. This gives them a little bit of a reprieve. Ned, you're exactly right, and that's what triggered that wreck. They were looking in the mirror, and they could see Hornaday coming. Everybody got a little lap in and started making contact. Hornaday, looking in his mirror, sees that yellow-fronted truck of Joe Rutman. More on Ron Hornaday. Here's Ralph. Mike on lap nine. Ron Hornaday radioed in. Then the truck was loose. On lap 39, he radioed back in and said, guys, the track is coming to us. It's starting to tighten up just the way I want it. Looks like they might have guessed right on their setup. So far, so good for race leader Ron Hornaday. I'm looking at the three truck there of uh, Sauter. He's beginning to smoke a little bit out of the left uh, pipe as he goes in the corner. That's the problem that probably will put him out later on because when they start smoking like that, you have that's the problems inside the motor. But he's trying to get inside of Tammy Joe Kirk right now, but he couldn't quite do it. Uh, he might have a little bit of a loss of horsepower, but you see that smoke right there again. And, uh, but it doesn't seem to be hurting him right now. 
but like you say, later on, it could come back to haunt him. Well, if you're going to run on seven cylinders, this is the place to do yeah. it because you got more horsepower than you possibly can ever use. Daughter inside of Tammy Jo Kirk. Ooh. <laughs> what a way to treat a lady. He's got him again. The ideal place to pass, you see Tammy Jo getting under uh, Dan Press going in that corner. If you can get under a truck going in the corner, oh, trouble in turn two. Mike Coates has fun. And truck number 15, Penrose truck. No, no yellow. Caution. No yellow. Having trouble getting it going again, the two-time All-Pro Series champ. Now he's just back onto the racetrack. But he's lost a lap. Boy, it doesn't take long here. 16 second laps at this place. Up front, here's Hornaday in 16. Lapping Brian Cunningham. And right with him, Joe Rutman. Mike, you can see the slower traffic as the lap, as they get lapped, they go to the outside because the preferred line on this racetrack is right around the bottom. So instead of moving out of the way to the inside, the truck. Sauter turns Tammy Joe Kirk around. They had banged together several times. And this time, Kirk went spinning at one of the fastest parts of this racetrack. Boy, she's coming back down, but fortunately she had the wheels cut on the truck, left that inside groove open, so a lot of trucks could go by. She was fortunate not to get hit again. So Tammy Jo Kirk picks up in line after spinning with Jay Sauter, and that does bring out the third caution of the day. Comes out of lap 52. Well, folks, so far, I think the bull is in the lead. <laughs> Here's what happened. See Tammy Jo there, and just behind her is Jay Sauter in the three truck. They start in, the, you can see Jay now, he's coming in pretty hard there. Just a little contact, but it don't take much here because you're already in a turn. And she almost saves it right there, and then it comes around on her. There's another look. There it is, just a little bit of a tap, as Buddy says. Didn't take much. Right there, you can see the contact. Now it looks like it's awfully hard to catch one of these things once they start to go. Mike, here's the thing. Right here, she thinks she's got it back. Watch her when she lets off the brake and it turns back uh. up the racetrack there. And our Econolodge camera from Jay Sauter's truck Let's see if we can. Leaving the scene of the crime. <laughs> <laughs> We're under caution for the third time today. CBS Sports coverage of the Louisville 225 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. to green with 59 laps complete here after the fourth caution of the day. Ron Hornaday continues to command this race. Tammy Jo Kirk now finds herself back in 27th position. For Kirk, this is one of her key tracks. She nearly won a 300-lap all-call race, led to the white flag lap a year ago before she fell to second. She's got some work to do now, but this is a track where she can get it done. Mike? Thanks, Ken. You're watching Jay Sauter, and you see that smoke continues to pour from Sauter. And you can hear that truck on and off the throttle and get an idea where that's coming in. Mike, he's on his last leg, it looks like. He's dropping back through the field. He may be doing that to keep from getting black flags. You know, when you're smoking in front of a lot of trucks, they'll put the black flag on you because they think you're hindered. But you drop back out of that pack, and they'll let you stay out there as long as you're not endangering other people. Wow. Ned, it, Ned, it sounds like when he backs off the throttle, that's when it starts smoking. They just give him the black flag as he come by just now, Mike. Yeah, and apparently he's got some oil, something wrong inside the engine on that car, and it's, it's running inside, and that oil, when it backs off the throttle, it's... Okay, let's find out for sure what is going on. Route 
Well, unfortunately, Ned, they're not really going to know for sure until they get to take the hood up and take a look inside. They do know that it is leaking some oil, and it's only coming out when he lifts off of the throttle. They have gotten the black flag, and he will be bringing the car around to the attention of the crew. And once they get in here, they'll have an opportunity to figure out why this number three truck is actually smoking. Well, while three is smoking, Hornaday is smoking the field. He has taken off from Joe Rutman. Well, he got a great jump on the restart, and Joe Rutman was, was caught in behind two lap trucks. Took him a while to get by them, and Hornaday just jumped out to a nice, comfortable lead. But I think that Rutman is beginning to close in a little bit, but 